I'm back. Did you oh, talk? You're back. While I was then. there. Um, no, my, my, I couldn't my, figure. I couldn't figure out who was frozen. You or me? I. That's what I was saying at first, and then I saw uh, my internet thing down in the corner just completely oh. be gone. I had no internet right. for a while. Well, okay, there. Finally, so they're letting me know. Now yep. everybody's letting me know. It's, it's Dave. Dave. It's Dave. It's Dave. Yep. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I, 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 I mean. It, don't we sound like a couple of old guys sitting around talking about yeah, the current stealing? In, yeah, we're back in my day. Yeah, back in my day. It's not, we just need to make the jokes Get like, uh, like uh, um, what's what's the what's Walt Waldorf and the other guy? Stadler. Stadler. There we go. I almost said Sandler. I knew that was wrong. <laughs> so Sadler and Waldorf. Sadler and Waldorf. If we can, if we can make the jokes like them, we could. Which yeah. actually is funny. I just was before we before you hopped on here uh, earlier this evening. I was watching um, um, a Weezer video, the the Keep Fishing Weezer video with the Muppets, and uh, they're on at the end. Yep. Because for those who don't know, Sadler and Waldorf. Waldorf. That's the two old guys that sit in the balcony. And they're throwing it. But we sound like a couple old guys like, why can't these young whippersnapper receivers on the Steelers be more like the guy back in my day? Even though back in our day wasn't all that long ago. But it, it really is true. It really is true. So, the, 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 offensive, the, the offensive side of the football right now for the Steelers is missing leadership. Yes. And it's missing leadership that it had had for years. And honestly, one of the people I, I'm not even putting into that is Ben Roethlisberger. I'm not putting Ben Roethlisberger in there. I'm thinking of guys like, you know, Heinz Ward mm-hmm. and Jerome Bettis. Yes. And, you know, you had guys that that constantly, you know, in the locker room, talked the talk and walked the walk. I'm going to say another one since then. That they, that, they, that they miss. That's Marquise Pouncey. Yes. Ben knew that Pouncey was the leader of the offense. Correct. Yes. Ben knew that. And that's why he would vote for, for Pouncey as team MVP every year. So, yep. Um, Kyle had a comment earlier I was brought up, Kyle Smith. And then he has a super chat now, which goes along the same line, because I, I, I thought it was very interesting what he said before. So I'm glad he did this one, because now, now I have it easier there. Um, he throws $5 into the tip chart. Thank you very much, Kyle. That says, people don't want another AB. I wish Pickens were AB. He gave 100% on everything so long as he was on the field. Pickens has the attitude, not the ethic. You could not, you couldn't, you would not criticize Antonio Brown's work ethic. He was the first one on the field and the last one off the field every day at training camp. He knew what it took to work hard. He just it was what got him. Was, you know, why, you can say why, and, and the, the people have their theories. But from 2018, the the the, the end of 2018 on, he just lost. It was never the same again. No matter what. And, and, right. Well, you can say no matter where he went, but even when he was still with the Steelers. Until we had that the no show game, the issues were never between the lines until right there at the very end. Yeah, that he took it to be between the lines. All the issues were things that were were outside the lines of the field. Yeah, until the no show game. Yeah, until yeah. till till we had that, the, and which then he was gone. So. Um, I think Kyle's comment there was very, very pertinent. You know, yeah, you, I agree. You, you're willing. To, we were willing to put up with a little bit more of some of the extra stuff you got from AB off the field because everything was business on the field. Because he he was arguably the best wide receiver in the league on the field. Correct. Yeah. So. So yeah, it's just. So therefore, it's the question is, can that kind of issue be fixed between now and the end of the season? Can it be fixed for next year? What's going to happen? I don't know. I'm not going to speculate. Let's just see. I'll be very interesting to see what kind of effort we get from one number 14 this weekend. And I'd be very interesting to see if, if you know, I wouldn't be shocked if they announced the offense, if he's not announced as a starter, you know, 
But beyond that, I don't know what they're doing. At least Coach Tomlin said when he's like, uh, there's still places to grow. And then they asked him about that play. He's like, that's an example of places to grow. So Tomlin basically said, yeah, that was not good. So it is what it is. I don't like talking about this either, but we're getting towards the end of this, towards the end of the show. It's another elephant in the room. It's not a monkey in the room. A monkey on an elephant in the room. A monkey on the back of an elephant in the room. There, there you go. go. There, there you go. go. That's so, what it is. There you go. And that is, even though I don't know how everything's going with the with the appeal, but the Steelers lost another safety for the remainder of the season due to the suspension of DeMonte Casey. Is there anything you would like to say? I know a lot of people have a lot to say about that. Oh, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I will sum it up very, very simple, okay? In four in four words. Okay. Okay. See Tom Brady's comments. Yeah. That's it. I agree. Like I agree. Like yeah. I, I think you actually said that I, before Tom Brady said it. <laughs> you put it in, in, in the Slack channel, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I did. The you know, but I, I'm you know, I've always despised Tom Brady. But there have been times both during his career and since where I give Tom Brady credit. Yeah, yeah. You and this him, is you, one of them. You can't say he wasn't a good player. Basically, what are we saying? What are we saying to safeties that they're supposed to do now? Hmm. Are they supposed to just let the guy catch the ball and touch him? Wait till he's down and around touch him? Mm-hmm. You know, my my comment, I think I, I, I threw out there, I don't remember if it's in the Slack channel or it was on the post-game show, is like, you know, I, I think we're just going to tell, we should just tell all our receivers going across the middle now, just dive every time. No matter, no matter if you need to, just dive. Because there's because no way they then, can hit you without it being a penalty. Cor- correct. Yeah. So which is, which is which is true. Dive for every ball mm-hmm. and get the calls. Okay. Now I I'm gonna say this, and some pe- a lot of people are gonna disagree with me, is I was not surprised it was a penalty, and I'm not even surprised it was ejected. Um the suspension thing, I felt for the rest of the season and potentially play. Also, you don't have to worry about that because, as as we know, um, playoffs. Yeah, um, the that that's not something something to to worry about. But okay, Steelers yeah, Pittsburgh and that's, the thing. that's why Josh, that's why Josh got Dobbs got benched because he threw threw Justin, Justin Jefferson. A Jefferson a, that's right, threw yeah. a hospital ball. Yes, and. Yeah, and they benched him for it. Now, I will tell you this, because some people are like, oh, but he it wasn't helmet to helmet. He wasn't called for helmet to helmet. And they're like, he hit his shoulder into his into his shoulder, and you got to look at the other angle. And I'm not saying it was, it was Casey's intent, and I'm not saying that he could have done anything different, but he snapped his head back far with his shoulder into his face mask. When you look at the other camera angle. And the, so and, I get right. why they threw the flag. I get probably because now here's my question to you. Is KZ ejected and suspended? If that's one of eight, 1 PM games on Sunday. No, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Your answer. That has everything to do with it being a stand-alone game on national TV. And not just on national TV. How many other times before? Not just on national TV. Yeah. On the NFL network. Yes. The NFL's network. Yes. So, you don't do that on our network. So, will, will the NFL ever say that the only option KZ had there was to not hit him. They won't say that. But without saying it, they'll say it. That's His option what the there was, is. If, you can't, what the... if, if you can't make a hit without doing that, 
then don't hit the guy. You you are supposed to just let him catch it and touch him down. They can't say that. But, but in they essence, did. they're but without saying it, they're saying it. Yeah, they said it. Yeah. There you go. I saw this too. And yes, I, I, I actually went back and listened to Rich Eisen show yes yesterday, and he said Rich Eisen said while he was calling the game, he he said he could see that hit coming a mile away. Mm-hmm. He said when Minshew let go of the ball, he almost said a bad word on 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 live TV. Yeah. Now, so so that's what I think stinks because bottom line is. Eight years ago, this wouldn't have been a penalty. I I don't know that it even been a penalty. You know, fifteen years ago, it 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 would have probably won him some some sort of side award. But that's the NFL today, and based on the NFL today, whether you agree with it or not, that's what is coming. Like so many times, I say stuff that that I have to remind people: it's not that I agree with it; it's just the way it is. I don't agree with with certain things, but I just know that it's coming. I I seeing that and knowing the NFL today, he's going to get that flag and he's going to get that ejection. And yes, and the biggest thing was the way the head bent backwards when you saw it from the other angle. If he could have glanced with his shoulder off the top of his head and kind of gone a little bit more over the top of him, he probably would have still got the penalty. But not the ejection. It, it 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 gave it it damaged the look of the shield on their channel. And like Steelers Freak said, Jack Lambert would be arrested for attempted murder playing today. <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you again. This just goes on to well. Let's see who was I talking with. Mm-hmm. I don't even remember who it was. But just put it this way. If I did not work for the Steel Curtain Network, Mm -hmm. I would not watch much football anymore. Just because of? Just because they have, the the Mm -hmm. league has made NFL football almost unwatchable. Yeah. To me. Okay. Um, And here, and here's why. Okay. I've always told you that I cannot stand, I despise college football. And the NFL is trying to turn NFL football into college football or worse. Yeah. And Um, I I, like, if I didn't do the work for Steel Curtain Network, I would have quit watching probably even Steelers games five or six weeks ago. Because of the frustration with the NFL and what they're yeah, or I would just watch what? when I when I could. Like I would, fu- I would mm-hmm. have other things I would do with some of my. You time. would you would prioritize over time. Here, here Correct. here's something. World Traveler seventy says you can't penalize or find physical play out of football. You know what? They're trying as hard as they can. They're to do trying. It. I'm That's not right. So I, it hasn't been it hasn't been proved yet if they can or can't. But let's just say how much things, you know. The, the changes they made with James Harrison. And then he gets called for what was the Browns quarterback? I don't even care who it was that he completely jacked up. And there's like, that's the kind of stuff they're trying to get out of there. You don't see that nearly as much because they've been finding it and, and penalizing it out of the game. Now it's new stuff. Bottom line is the NFL, what yeah, makes you, money but the thing is, is team now you end up, points. <laughs> but now you end up seeing quarterbacks get away from yeah. rushers and things that they never would have before. And it's like, you, you wonder well, why they get, well, that's because the rushers are afraid to hit them because they're going to get flagged and fined. Yeah. And the thing is, is it all the, this is what bothers me the most about everything with KZ. Like I'm saying, I'm not surprised by any of this. I'm not surprised at the suspension, the fine, you know, people that are like, oh, that's so terrible. I, You could say it's terrible. I thought it was coming based on what I saw, based on what the NFL has said. And what happened? I'm not denying what happened isn't something that went against what the NFL said. I'm just saying what the NFL has done to get there. And that is they have put all the responsibility 
of the safety of the offense on the defensive players. Yeah. So now the offensive players who used to not, I mean, you know, offensive players used to make that business decision. You don't want to go up over and, and over the middle and get absolutely pummeled. You just kind of put one arm up and duck a little bit and you can't quite get the ball. You know, you still see it some, but you don't see it as much. You know why? Because they can go up and make that catch because it's on the defense to make sure the offensive player doesn't get hurt, not yeah. for the offensive player to protect themselves. The offensive player is no longer responsible for protecting himself. Right. It's the defense. And, and, and that's and why that's you now. Problem. And that's why the offense is, that's what they're doing, doing these things, like you said. And that's now why you see quarterbacks throwing hospital balls. Exactly. Because receivers you would have never, you them. would have never seen that. You yeah. would have never seen that in the NFL. That throw be made 15 years ago. No, because if that if you made too many of those throws, you didn't last because you were getting your receivers killed. Exactly. Exactly. Well, now you see those. Now you see those throws all the time, because the defense either isn't hitting guys or they're hitting guys and getting fined and suspended. Yes. Yes. Outside Steeler fan, I'm I starting agree. to agree. Why? Yeah. Why? Well, right. Well, just, you know. Yeah. Mr. Woodpots, I said it. QB would be benched. All right. Yes. Uh, we, we, we've, I've got to get these. Yeah. you Like Josh Dobbs was for, for getting, you know, uh, Jefferson killed on his first game back. Yeah, it would the responsibilities on the quarterback to not put the ball there because the receiver shouldn't have to be expected to go get that ball. But now the quarterback puts the ball there, the receiver's willing to go get it, and he's going to either be safe. Now, because the thing is, yeah, that hit, you still don't want to take that hit. But in today's NFL, you'd make that play expecting for that hit not to come. So here we go. Uh, let's see. I got cows earlier. Here we go. Stiller's Reaper. 499 at the tip chart says, Merry Christmas, guys, to you and your families. Merry Christmas to you as well, Steelers Reaper. Wish me luck going to the game Saturday. Take care. Yeah. Enjoy that one. I'll, I'll give you this. I don't think it'll be that bad. Unless you have to get, have to exit the stadium three times. I got you beat still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, that was pretty that, that, that was pretty bad. Um yeah. and then Ka Kathy Ford says, um, this penalty will make everyone even less motivated to play hard. Well, that's my infamous play hard. Thank you, Kathy. I get your reference, five dollars in tip jar. I assume you're referencing where, where Jeff and Brian laugh at where I say that you gotta play hard. Not not it'll make the defense second guess or you know think twice about making that hit. And I not not because they don't want to hurt the guy, but because they don't want to hurt their life, their own livelihood with fines, suspensions without pay, and things of that nature. And it's just not worth it. I mean, Rich, you and I were at the game, KZ's first game with the Steelers in the regular season, where he came back off of IR, and that was against. He had to start because Minka was out, and he started last year against the Saints, yes. there was a play to Chris Olave down the sidelines. We're, we're, in, we're looking at it from the end zone, so it was on our left side. So if you're watching it on TV, it would have been, they were moving left, it would have been the far sideline. And KZ comes over on the sideline and separates the ball from him. He got flagged for it. 15 yards, they get a first down, all the other stuff. If he doesn't do it, he catches the ball. Right. And if anything else, he made him think twice about catching that ball again. But that's the repeat offender stuff that the that the NFL is talking about. He's, he's been fined five times this year. I think two or three of them were ascended, you know, and, and everything. And then if you saw on social media, him jacking up Cam Newton when he was sliding back when he was with the Falcons. And so they're talking about all this history and everything with, with, with KZ. So, I mean, that could come into it, but my thing is, it's to a point now you can't even hit someone hard to send a message. I expected him to get flagged on the on the big hit he had earlier in the game because the NFL has basically made it every time there's a hard hit, there is a reason you could throw the flag for it. 
Because yeah. they want to Sherry, Sherry says if the NFL keeps keeps it up, it's going to be flag football. Are you going to watch? Not me. Yeah. So but I mean it, it, it's almost getting to that unwatchable point now for mm-hmm. me, Sherry. That's what I'm that's what I'm talking about. That honestly, if it wasn't for the work I do for Steel Curtain Network, I would be spending more of my 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 weekend time doing some mm-hmm. other things and not always watching football. Yeah. So and as and that Steelers freak says, this really sums it up because this is something I was, I was a point I was trying to make when I got sidetracked. He's like, yep. NFL wants high scoring games for cash, and it will continue to change the rules against the defensive favor. End of story. That's why it's the responsibilities on the defense to protect the offensive players. There's they are they want the offensive players running free and clear to make those graceful, wonderful catches. And, and everything that they don't want to overturn on the sidelines when their heel comes down out of bounds because then they can't put them on their cool highlight films. Yeah. Sorry, I had, to, I had to harken back to the Rams game. Um, yeah. and, and things and things of that nature because that's what that's what they're selling now. That's what they're selling. And see, and that's but this also comes right back to George Pickens again and his attitude and his problems. He hasn't been able to. He, he hasn't been getting the opportunity to have those kind of those highlight catches. I don't even know if George Pickens cares about touchdowns. I don't know if George Pickens cares about winning. But I tell you what, I think George Pickens cares about it, about showing up on a highlight reel. Yep. For the right reason and not the wrong reason like he did this past week. Exactly. All right. We're way over. Um yep. but these were these were issues I didn't really want to talk about, but we had to. We had to and like I said, for, for people, I hope you don't give me too hard of the time that I'm like, no, I I don't think the refs made the wrong call. I don't think, you know. Well, no, they call it according to the NFL rules. Exactly. I might not care for the NFL rules, but the refs enforced what the league has told them to enforce. But again, this is where I think the referees are being micromanaged, micromanaged. by the NFL. Yes. So many points of emphasis and everything. You know what? You can't legislate your way into safety, you know, or or to a better product on the field. Correct. And you know what, actually? I mean, come on. Think about it. When we were kids, when we were kids, we were playing games. Even, you know, my goodness, you, how many wiffle ball games did you and I play, you know, one-on-one forever growing up? A ton. You yep. can't, the more rules you make, the more of a chance you're going to have an argument. <laughs> well, don't don't let me start to bring up the fact there's there's Dave changing the rules in the middle of the game again. Now, it's, <sighs> it's just easier. I mean, honestly, the less rules. I mean, that's why you put the chair there. If the ball hits the chair, it's a strike. If it doesn't, it's a ball. You know, exactly. It either does or it doesn't. You're not getting you're not getting too too fancy here or there. If the ball has to. Hit off this part on the house to be a double. That's just what it was. That was the more, but if we, you kept putting in more and adding rule on rule on rule on rule on rule, there was no way we were ever going to actually agree and, on that. And, one, right. Really. And, and, and rules that could be interpreted in different ways. You, you had to keep them simple. You had to keep it easy. And the NFL has done anything but that. That's correct. But they could. They could put a chip in the ball and make it easier to measure. I mean, the chip's in the ball to figure out the the spin rate for the for the I know. next gen stats. They could use the chip that's in the ball to figure out, you know, if it's a first down, if it crossed the goal line, all this other stuff. But they won't do that. They would just rather make all well, these no, because then all because then they give up. Con- but see, then technically they're giving up control. Yeah. They're giving up control to a computer. They want the officials to do things or not know where to spot the ball and call New York. Yeah. Yep. And see, and that's another thing. When you're the only game going on, you're going to get everything from New York. That's on. That's I. I don't think they went to a review, but you know, someone from New York is on is is in the. Oh yeah. They can they can do the quick reviews from New York without even the officials looking at it. I can all but guarantee that the that the decision to eject KZ came from New York. Oh, I, I'm sure that uh, probably within six, seven seconds of the play being over yeah. was yep. put into the referees here. So, all right, Rich, yeah. we're 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 way over, so you got to go quick because we're going to bring him up quick. Don't even know how much we we 
you know, we were talking so much about other things. Yes, the Steelers play on Saturday. Yes, they have a chance to turn it around. No, a lot of us are thinking that they can't. Yes, there's plenty of people that think that they can. Rich, give me your score before we then bring up everybody else's scores. Okay, no faith in the Steelers. Bengals 28, Steelers 17. 28. You think the Steelers will score 17 with Mason Rudolph? Uh, yeah, I think there's a chance, but this <laughs> this may actually be your defensive touchdown you were talking about earlier. Yeah, but yeah, they they I I think there's a chance they could get to that on the Bengals, mm-hmm. but I think they're going to give up too many. Yeah, yep, I can see that because the defense is just now there's probably no Jamar Chase, but. You know what? I'm not banking on that. I, to me, it, it doesn't even matter who the other team has. Been. That, it really doesn't. No, Jake Browning, look, Joe Burrow, you know, look, Joe Flacco. <laughs> did, didn't we <laughs> figure out how the Steelers are get, going to get beat by the running backs and the tight ends? Yeah. Honestly, that, I think the running that's, it's that's the running, what's been killing them. It's the passing game to the running backs is what I think is killing them. I think that's well, what's going to get Last them. game, they got killed in the running game, too. Yeah. But yes, I yes. agree. The, in the passing well, game, late in the game after they didn't have the lead anymore, but early on, what what got the Colts the lead back yes. was the passing game to the get running the, backs. Yeah. Get the scores. After 12 17 Bengals. Still on getting it. 24 13 Steelers. He believes in Mason. Oh, Thomas. He's going big time oh, score no. with this. Thomas Riley, 34 Steelers, 24 Bengals. Please tell me. That was a typo, and it was supposed to be 34-34. I don't know. We'll find out. From I don't know. We'll find out. You know, the, 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 he, he gave us the tie every week. We'll see. Steeler Chick 46 has Bengals 24, Steelers 14. Um, David Poe says, my heart says 23-9. Uh, my head says 13-30. <laughs> In other words, 23-9 Steelers. They said 13 to 30 Bengals. Uh, Brian Brown has 24-21 Steelers. Boz hits a 56. <laughs> let's not even talk about this. Yeah, let's not even get into that. Because that's that's another one that you could you could use the Willow description about that decision. Um, yep. So Gavin Anthony says Bungles 26-17. I hate losing. I'm so glad they beat them once already this season. I, to get swept yeah, by the, the last I'd want to do is lose two to them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Kobe has 24-17 Bengals. George Rice has 31 to 9 Bengals. John Walter has Bengals 27, Steelers 9. Um, outside Steelers fans, okay, we'll call you crazy if you want us to, but he has the Steelers beat up 42 to 12 because he believes in Mason. Okay. Um, I would love nothing more than the Mason, the Mason supporters be able to shut up the Mason haters. Uh, that would be that that would be a nice touch. Plus, it would be nice to have another Steelers win. Uh, Steelers Pittsburgh has 15 13 Wizard of Boz. Uh, you know, maybe the Steelers can save Christmas for us. That would be nice. Um, or else I'll just ignore the Steelers for Christmas. Uh, Mark Tobin has 35 10. That would be the Steelers. He's like, Mason lets them rip. So that's why guaranteed win. But did he guarantee win last week? I think he might guarantee win last week, too. Um, Kathy Ford has 24 17 Bengals. Um, um, Steelers Reaper's going to be there. But he still says that I assume it's he, maybe it's she. I don't know. Um, says 31 to 6, not the Steelers. Uh, World Traveler 70 has 21 13 Bengals. Tyler W has Bengals 31, Steelers 19. Kyle Smith has 27 19 Bengals. Uh, Mr. Woodsai has Steelers 24 23. And says, take the over. Uh, Jeremiah Yoder has 17 14 Steelers. Frosty the Bear. 31-17 Steelers. See, we got people believing, but Frosty also said that the defense will have to score twice. Um, Mar- uh, Ruben Stone says 31-17 with Mason back. All right. Um, Seth Phyllis. Is Phil- yeah, okay. Uh, says 13-48 Steelers. Mason's going to prove everybody. Mason's going to make everyone think that he's the future now. Maybe that's what that's going to be. Uh, Demetrios has Bengals 27, Steelers 13. Uh, Sherry Richards says the offense says Mitch is the problem, but it's going to be Bengals 26 24. Um, Jamie, is that Jamie? 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 I don't know. Uh, Rudolph has 14 he passes because they have it being 33 17 Steelers. Um, <laughs> it's 
Steelers Freak says that they have officially taken your heart this week. Um, Tom Vallejo has 24 21 Steelers. Um, is that the last one? No. Oh, I didn't realize I had a score in there. Um, Rand, we'll Rand's 87, I rock Z. Okay. Says he can see three TDs and field goal, being optimistic for a 24 17 Steelers win. To me, it's the D. De- can, can the defense get back to keeping a team to less than 17 points? Yeah, and could the offense score more than 17 points? Those are two big question marks. You have to believe yep. in, to me, I think a lot of it has to be that you got to believe in both those things. Yep. So, but you know what? I'm still going to be here for the preview on, on Thursday night. Reminder to everyone that that comes a little bit later now because Jeff and I now have basketball practice through nine o'clock um, for the foreseeable future, which is interesting. Um, so that one will be a little bit later. Other than that, we'll have the same schedule as last week. I'll be back on the post game show. You know, I'm really glad that the Steelers aren't going to ruin my Christmas. At least it's not Christmas Eve. But you know what? They could really turn, I mean, they could make my Christmas even more special by finding a way to win this game. But it's to me, it's not even about winning this game. It's not just about winning this game. The only way I'm really going to feel better is for them to play well and win this game. And we haven't really seen that, have we? They need to not look like a bunch of jagos out there on yeah. the field. So, so we'll see. So that's what I'm going to do. So make sure you check it out on our podcast. And, of course, we're still bringing all the podcasts. We're bringing all the content at SteelCurtainNetwork.com. We're not going anywhere, even if the Steelers players kind of seem like they have. So, Rich, what do you have to say to close this out here tonight? Hey, hey, um, hey, we won't be on here, the two of us together again, until after Christmas. So, so Merry Christmas, right. Dave. Merry um, Christmas, big bro. Um, Merry I'll Christmas. I'll talk to you on Christmas, but Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. Filthy animal. I'm, I've been sporting <laughs> my Christmas shirts ever since December started, rather than my Steelers gear. So I've got my um, my, my one this tonight. Yeah, it, it would. Yeah, would, would a Steelers win on Saturday be nice? Short would. Um, I, I don't know if we're going to. You know, I, I never know what we're going to see for the Steelers week to week right now. Yeah, but. I am going to be here on Saturday uh, on my couch come 4.30 watching the Steelers. I uh, have the entire family here as my daughter will be home from college. And um, I hope Kyle will at least watch a little bit of the game with me before he gets mad and bails. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's been his thing lately. He's just like, yeah, I can't take and it. You're, and I'm you're jealous. <laughs> I am a little jealous. But... Um, <sighs> Oh, thank oh, uh, Jeremiah Yoder wishes Chewbacca a Merry Christmas. Uh, you saw that? <laughs> so, I, oh, I have a um, Chewbacca Santa hat. I got to bust that out this week. Who did yeah, for other need, shows? <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, um, you know, I, I'm still going to look forward to at least a little bit to the game on Saturday. Why? Because I really do realize that we are winding down yeah. on the football season. And, you know, Things really change when football is gone. Th- then suddenly I'll ha- I'll have some Sundays where, you know, I get stuck inside here with the weather and it's like, okay, what now? I don't have even have football to watch. Yeah. Um, at that point in time, I just got to hope that it's been plenty cold and there's ice on the lake so I can go ice fishing. I-, I-, I don't know. But until then, for the next three weeks at least, there will be Steelers football to watch and I will be there to watch it. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs>